Ever sat through a movie that had you gripping the edge of your seat one moment, chuckling the next, and then hit you right in the feels shortly after? If not, you're in for a real treat with a certain classic film from 1954, directed by Alfred Hitchcock. It's a roller coaster of emotions that'll keep you hooked from start to finish. The story revolves around a photographer stuck in a wheelchair due to a broken leg. While recuperating, he becomes convinced he's witnessed a murder in a neighboring apartment. As he and his girlfriend delve deeper into the mystery, they uncover a web of secrets that'll leave you stunned. But what makes this movie truly special isn't just the suspense. and intrigue, it's the moments of humor, shock, and heartache woven throughout. With clever dialogue and unexpected twists, it's a journey you won't soon forget. Now, on to you. Do you have any fond memories associated with this film? Maybe it's a cozy movie night with loved ones or a lively discussion with friends that brought you closer together. We'd love to hear all about it. So grab your popcorn, get comfy, and prepare to be swept away by a cinematic experience like no other. This is one ride you won't want to miss. In 1954, a film hit the screens directed by Alfred Hitchcock. It featured a wheelchair-bound photographer played by James Stewart, who, unable to move freely, started spying on his neighbors. This voyeuristic behavior led him to suspect one of them of murder. The movie was a hit, loved for its suspenseful story and creative set design. Hitchcock's storytelling skills and the actors' performances, including Grace Kelly and Thelma Ritter, added to its success. Following its release, this movie became a cultural phenomenon. It inspired countless references in later films, TV shows, and fashion trends. The idea of watching others from afar and the tension it brings became popular themes in many forms of media. Not stopping there, the film's influence spread to adaptations, spin-offs, and merchandise. Its captivating story and memorable characters inspired various artistic works, from plays to books. Hitchcock's creation became an icon in popular culture, with its elements seeping into everyday life. The story's timeless appeal led to remakes in both film and TV, showing how it continues to resonate with audiences. And the merchandise, from posters to collectibles, allowed fans to hold on to their favorite moments from the film. In conclusion, the impact of this movie on popular culture cannot be overstated. Its reception, adaptations, and merchandise all speak to its lasting influence. Hitchcock's storytelling and the cast performances ensure that this film remains a cultural touchstone, influencing storytellers for years to come. Imagine a group of filmmakers teaming up in the 1950s to turn a story into a famous movie. They took a tale by Cornell Woolrich and turned it into a gripping film we all love. The original story missed some key stuff like a love story and more characters. So, Alfred Hitchcock and John Michael Hayes added those in. Hitchcock even told Hayes to spend time with Grace Kelly to get inspired for one of the characters. At first, one of the characters, Stella, didn't think much about what was happening. But when she heard about a possible breakup next door, she changed her mind. Another character, Lisa, didn't care much until she noticed some strange behavior from a salesman. Then she got caught up in all the gossip. The camera guy, Robert Burks, had a big idea. He set up a special camera on a crane to spy on the neighbors from afar. This made the movie feel like we were peeking into their lives. Altogether, Hitchcock, Hayes, and Burks turned Lorch's story into a nail-biting movie. It's all about curiosity and suspicion, and it's still a hit today. In a vast indoor space at Paramount Picture Studios, a movie from 1954 unfolds around characters played by James Stewart and Wendell Corey. They portray wartime buddies who flew a P-38 Lightning photo reconnaissance plane during World War II. One was the pilot, the other the photographer and navigator. Alfred Hitchcock is a director who had a big impact on movies. According to the fifth edition of a book called 1001 Movies You Must See Before You Die, which was edited by Stephen J. Schneider, Hitchcock's influence can be seen in 18 films, including one called Rear Window. This classic movie was filmed on one of Paramount's biggest indoor sets. It's just one example of how Hitchcock left his mark on cinema. In mid-century New York City, the scene was evolving, with new apartments replacing older tenements. The film captures this transition, showing not all units equipped with modern appliances, evidenced by the appearance of an Iceman delivering ice. The story, based on Cornell Woolwich's short story, cleverly reveals the protagonist's broken leg only at the end. Directed by Alfred Hitchcock, known for nine culturally significant films, including Rear Window, the movie remains a classic thriller. Amid the making of the movie, Sir Alfred Hitchcock had lost a lot of weight and was feeling pretty happy with where he was in life and his work. He said he was full of ideas and energy. This was a big deal for him. 
Grace Kelly had to make a tough choice between two acting gigs, one for Rear Window and the other for On the Waterfront. She went with Rear Window because she felt more connected to the character she'd be playing who was into fashion. It reminded her of her own past in the fashion world. In one scene, the character Lisa teases Jeff about being able to see her apartment from where he's sitting, hinting that she lives in the lower part of a fancy neighborhood near Central Park. These details give us a peek into what was going on behind the scenes and the decisions that shaped the movie. Hitchcock getting healthier and Kelly picking her role show how personal stuff can affect work choices. In the classic film, a 35 mm camera is wielded by James Stewart sporting a sizable telephoto lens. This camera, an early 1950s Exacta VX from Dresden, Germany, with a 400 mm Kilfit lens, is concealed beneath black masking tape by the Paramount Pictures property department. Throughout the narrative, James Stewart's character remains bound to a wheelchair. Interestingly, Raymond Burr, portraying the antagonist, later assumes the lead role in TV's Ironside, embodying the wheelchair-bound chief of police. Over time, the film negative suffered significant damage from color dye fading, notably in the 1960s. Most notably, the yellow image dyes faded. Despite concerns regarding irreparable damage, preservation experts successfully restored the film to its original coloration. In 1955, the first German dubbing for the film was created, but after the rights reverted back to Sir Alfred Hitchcock, all prints of this version were destroyed. When it became available again in 1984, a new dubbing had to be created since the old version could not be located, presumed lost. From Jeff's apartment, the majority of automobiles seen are from the Nash Motors Co. The first car is a 1954 Nash Ambassador, but the majority of subsequent vehicles are the 1955 model Ramblers, with a few exceptions. One of Jeff's neighbors can be heard listening to To See You Performed by Bing Crosby. Grace Kelly starred with Crosby in both High Society and The Country Girl. Lisa arranges for dinner from 21 to be delivered to Jeff's apartment. 21, a distinguished American traditional restaurant and bar, was a prominent establishment during filming. Although it relocated several times in New York City, it settled on West 52nd Street in 1929. Unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Club 21 ceased operations in March 2020 and did not reopen in its previous form by December 2020. Sir Alfred Hitchcock collaborated closely with Edith Head on costume designs. Their aim was to ensure distinct appearances for secondary characters, aiding audience identification. For instance, Miss Lonely Hearts wore emerald green attire, linking her romantic struggles with Lisa and Jeff's relationship dynamics, notably when Lisa dons a similar green suit. Franz Waxman composed the final score for the film, enhancing Hitchcock's vision with his musical arrangements.